I built this garden with the idea that moving fog would be better for delivering oxygen to the roots because a fan is constantly moving outside air over the roots. And I'd say it worked with moderate success. First, let's go over the design, and then I'll talk to you guys about a few things that I would change or that I plan to change in the future. So the way I designed this was with the intention of pushing air through the larger pipe and back down through the smaller one. However, I'm not really sure that worked. I'm pretty sure it just blows air through both, which is fine as long as the roots are getting enough fog. So typically you would never wanna leave a fogger running constantly. Like over here in my Fogponic DWC setup, I have this fogger on a timer. Otherwise it'll heat the water up way too much. It nukes the roots and funkifies my nutrients and it's just all sorts of bad. So typically you don't wanna run a fogger full time. However, what I've noticed with my other two gardens that both have fans circulating the air and cooling the air down, you actually can leave them running full time and the water never gets above 70 degrees. So in this garden, after a lot of trial and error and experimenting, I decided uh, that it works the best to leave the fan and fogger on full time. So when I first designed this tower, I was hoping that the little bit of leaking air around each plant would be enough to keep the air moving through the whole system. Because in a setup like this that's fully sealed, you have to have air escaping somewhere in order for the air to move through the system. You can't move air through a vacuum. Unfortunately, a little bit of leaking air around each puck was not enough, so I ended up drilling three small holes in the system. I drilled one at the bottom of each of the legs and one top dead center. And this did a good job of moving the air to each part of the garden. So I wanted to experiment with the basket holders. So I actually mounted some of them flush and some of them I mounted in with PVC fittings. And the plants that are in the fittings have actually done better. I don't know why, but I used just some two inch PVC and cut it up and mounted my baskets in that. Um, they've done significantly better than the ones that aren't. So I'd have to recommend doing the two inch PVC all the way around to hold your baskets. Now, if you begin seeing roots with fuzzy hairs like these, you're doing well. I noticed cabbage is the MVP of the fog planet gardens, but I'm experimenting with a few things like a tomato plant and a jalapeno plant. Emphasis on experimenting. One thing that I noticed with this garden in particular is that fog is tough to contain if you have it moving through a system um, with intentional leaks. What happens is around these leaks, the fog starts to build up and until it builds droplets of concentrated nitrogen, I'm sorry, nutrient water and then that just drips down and it's always really, really dark brown and it just stains the whole thing. So maybe I would have used black pipe. I guess that brings me to what I would change. So yeah, first off, I, I'm thinking about painting it or uh, just building a whole nother one using black tubing so that you can't see uh, the concentrated nutrient leakage that happens. You know, if I sealed it up perfectly, then the fog wouldn't move. So there's really, I, I don't think there's any way around that. The biggest thing that I would change though is the reservoir. You know, I'm using a floater, and if you're using a floating um, fogger, then there's absolutely no reason you can't have a big reservoir for your nutrients. I would at least have gone with a five gallon bucket or something on this. Because of the leakage, I have to fill this like every other day, and I, that just gets to be annoying. So I might uh, do some redesigns and build this with a larger reservoir in the future. Another thing I'm gonna be changing is if you look inside here, because I tried to make this pipe the return pipe, I made it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna gauge that and pull that back out uh, so that this even flow on both sides because you know I've, after I planted the tomato and the jalapeno plant I noticed significantly less growth on this side uh, than I do over here on the left side of the tower so I think that's probably because my pipe setup didn't really work the way that I didn't intended it to so that's how it goes you know this is called humble growth for a reason it's growing pains you live and you learn and I'm just glad that I get to report to you guys what I've learned so that if you want to build a fog ponic tower you can learn from my mistakes and my successes and implement the things that I'm sharing with you in these videos so I hope this has been helpful to you I think fog ponics is really really cool but there are definitely some learning curves uh, I'm certainly gonna be doing a follow-up video of this tower garden with every change that I make so make sure you're subscribed and I'll catch you guys later